God, the second person of the Trinity, the Son, became flesh. He was one person with two natures. And he was truly a man, and in that nature as man, he was hungry, he was tired, because he had to be man at the sacrifice. He was truly deity, because only in that union of the divine and human, not a mixture, it's not a, a demigod, it's not some other god, it is the one true God, Yahweh, who has entered into human flesh, and there is a relationship between the two, and only in that one man can the place of God's wrath against sin and God's justice and love be met upon the cross of Calvary so that we can have true eternal life. That's what makes the cross and the person of Jesus absolutely unique. So we believe he is one person with two natures. And I believe if God can create the human nature, he can take on a sinless and perfect human nature. And that's exactly what he does in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Dr. Ali. I believe the questioner is correct. Uh, to say that Jesus was God and man at the same time is like saying I saw a square circle. The thing does not exist. For Jesus to be a man, he had to have a human mind. And for him to be God, he had to have a divine mind. Now the human mind has to know that he's not God. A human mind that thinks that he's God is a madman. But the, the divine mind has to know that he's not a human being. That God couldn't think that he's a human being. And, and so the two could not really be. There are two minds. Uh, in, in, in the one person, and that means that you do not have the God man. Next question, please. And who is it for? And there's only five minutes left, so move quickly. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people. Okay, I have one question for Dr. White and one question for Shabir. Oh, you only have one question. Who's it for? That's a good one. Okay. Chapter 17 of the Holy Quran, verse 93. The certain demands of the uh, infidels were is quoted there. And one of the demands is that they asked God to have a peace upon him to ascend physically up to the heavens. And he was ordered to say that I am not, uh, nothing but a human prophet. You believe that Jesus Christ ascended physically up to the heavens. Don't you think that he is God? Well, it's true that the Quran says that Jesus ascended into heaven, and it is true that the Quran depicts Muhammad as a human being. The Muslims also believe that Muhammad had a, a, an experience of uh, an Isra al Miraj. Uh, but the, your, the essence of your question is does this prove somehow that Jesus is superior because he's now alive in, in heaven with God? And so the Muslims know, uh, the New Testament also makes it clear that it is God who raised Jesus. So when God raised Jesus, then God is the actor, Jesus is the actor upon. And therefore Jesus is the object here. And God is the power that raised Jesus, even according to the New Testament. This is why the New Testament uh, document, the Acts of the Apostles, depict the Apostles of Jesus as saying that uh, they, they always said that the God of our forefathers has raised Jesus from the dead. This is the depiction. So, and they said that Jesus is the servant of that God. So it is very clear, the fact that Jesus is raised not by God, means that Jesus is dependent upon God, it is God who is the actor, and Jesus is the object. Actually, the New Testament presents the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all active in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is clearly seen in the fact that one of the common accusations made against Jesus at his trial was that he had said he would destroy this temple in the three days he would raise it up. What was he talking about? Was he talking about the temple of Jerusalem? No. He was talking about the temple of his own body. And so each of the divine persons were involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that is another of the many examples found in the New Testament of the point us to the doctrine of the Trinity. Thank you. Next question. There's only two minutes and 45 seconds left. Move quickly. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to make an appeal here to James and his accusation for inconsistency on the first part. Um, basically, you make the accusation that because the Trinity is un not understandable by man, you say three and one, that it's not true. Uh, by taking that into account, there's also a question. Who's this addressed to? Uh, Shabir. Shabir, oh, okay, got okay. it. Um, when we, when we do a good deed, uh, basically we attribute, uh, like we can take it as currency, moral currency to get us into heaven. Now if we pay off a human judge or a cop, we would be condemned for that, for that action. Your question please. Uh, my question is how do you reconcile justice and mercy to a God who is infinitely justice and infinitely merciful if you don't have a way to credit yourself towards that God? As you said, this is something for another night, and I look forward to that dialogue. Uh, but for the, the, in answer to your question, uh, the Muslim perspective is that God is forgiving and merciful as well as, as, in addition to being just. 
So if one wrongs another, then obviously some, there has to be some uh, repayment. And God can uh, repay the person who is wrong. And so things are even, Stephen. And now all that remains is for God to forgive us. But if we are in a position to repair the harm we've done to others, then we are required to do that as well. In the end, still the forgiveness of God. This is promised again and again in the Quran. But the same forgiveness is promised in the Bible as well. Jesus' story of the prodigal son, what does that prove? It proves that if you turn back to God repentant, God forgives you. He welcomes you with open arms, just like this father welcomed his son who had previously disobeyed. That is the teaching of the Bible. It was the teaching before St. Paul wrote that the wages of sin is death and the, the gift of God is eternal life through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So the story has been changed. Uh, it was a change because the prodigal son story is about uh, the Jews and the Gentiles coming to church. But be that as it may, this entire issue is the very focus of why it's very important for us to dialogue because the fact of the matter is what we have in Jesus Christ is we have the very grounds whereby God's holiness is not simply put aside. That's a part of his attributes. His law is a part of who he is. And that law is fulfilled in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, not simply put aside. Okay, there's only 20 seconds left, so we will have to end the questioning here. I'm sorry that many of you will go back disappointed, but you may get an opportunity to speak to the debaters at the closing. But thank you very much. I'm sure you all had excellent questions. We now come to our closing uh, statements. Five minutes each. First it will be Dr. James White. Matthew, Mark, and Luke 
believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that the people who wrote the Gnostic Gospels didn't believe in that God, and in fact reviled that God. And if you'll take the time to just understand that what we have is all this, all of the earliest evidence points us to the same conclusion. And here's my question for all of us this evening. What if those texts I presented to you are right? What if Jesus Christ when standing before his accusers, identified himself as the Son of Man, the Son of Man who is worshipped by his followers and is given a kingdom that will never end and is worldwide, what if that, which is part of the earliest tradition even from the liberal perspective, what if that is true? My Muslim friends, what if every breath that you have and every beat of your heart actually comes from the hands of Jesus of Nazareth? What if he truly was the incarnate one? You cannot treat him as a mere Razul. The Jews did that in John chapter 8. They refused, they would have accepted him as a Messiah, they would have accepted him as a prophet. He raised the dead. It's pretty hard to argue with that. But what they rejected was that he truly was the eternal one, that he had come into human flesh. And Jesus said to them, unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. That sounds very final to me, my friends. And so have you ever pondered, what if Jesus was telling the truth? What if this message, which existed for hundreds of years before the Quran came into existence, what if it's true? What will you do with a Jesus who can stand before his accusers and say, I am the Son of the Blessed One, and you will see the Son of Man coming with clouds and with power? Are you ready to meet that Jesus? That is the Jesus I believe in. That is the Jesus I pray will reveal himself to you even this evening. Thank you very much. For your Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, in the first, in, in the first gospel, 
And the second one, he said to Jesus, Lord. Same event. Rabbi, Lord, not a difference. And in the one event, Jesus called, it is called the Son of God. But that's the second gospel. In the previous one, Peter just simply confessed, you are the Messiah, and so on. These are clear examples of changes. Uh, you don't have to be a believer in one thing or another. You just have to be a rational human being. You see that one guy is saying this, one guy is saying the other thing, and the two things don't match. It is very clear. Uh, so when we saw that, what was James's reply? Well, he tried to give us one example, the example about the master of the house. And he says, well, okay, the word Lord is used in both of them in the Greek, but notice what is done in the first example. In the first example, in, in Mark's gospel, Jesus refers to himself as the master of the house. That's like saying in Arabic, Rabbo light. But then in the second gospel, he refers to himself as the Lord. That's like saying in Arabic, Rabbo. So there's a difference between Rabbo's wife and Abraham, master of the house or lord of the house, if you like, and the lord. There is a change between the two. And this change has been admitted by Robert Stein in his book, The Synoptic Problem, on page 86, where he says uh, that uh, Matthew has, uh, it seems evident that what Matthew has done is change the saying about the parable of master of the house, the lord. So uh, this is biblical scholarship, folks, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very surprised that after I've gone through the trouble of citing conservative scholars, I'm still hearing from James that you're here, you're not citing the right scholars. Uh, this is a very uh, confusing sort of uh, uh, signal I am receiving. What about the apocryphal right material? The apocryphal material is not necessarily wrong. There may be some truth in the apocryphal material, and one has to evaluate them as we evaluate any other material. So if the Quran refers to some material which is not in the Gospels, that doesn't mean that the Quran is referring to something wrong. Somebody made a decision to not include that and to include this. That somebody's decision could be a wrong decision. The Quran is more open in its approach in, in looking at whatever materials were available and then bringing out its own theology based on that. What I found interesting is uh, the problem of definition. James in his book on the Trinity said that uh, a lot of discussion goes on because people don't define the terms. But if we define Yahweh as the Trinity, and then Yahweh sent the Son, and then the Son is not included in the Trinity. If we describe Yahweh as the Father, and He's the only God, then only the Father is God, the Son cannot be God. I think we have set a wrong foot putting because James failed to identify his term and to define his term, and I thank you very much. <laughs> Religious fanaticism, 
people being discriminated, people feeling victimized because of religion is an ongoing issue in the world. And at North American Foundation, we are planning a debate among students on Islamophobia and anti-Semitism on the 29th of April. I'm asking students to participate, young students, teachers to participate in this debate, as well as I'm asking yourself to attend this debate here at this very venue. For more information, kindly check our website, nemf.ca, or talk to me after the event. There is no way any one of us could subscribe to discrimination and victimization of anyone regardless of their faith or religion. Thank you again, and have a safe trip back to your places. Yeah, I